Since around 2008, when the DSLR revolution put full-frame sensors in the hands of amateur filmmakers and videographers, super shallow depth of field has become something of a cliche in indie filmmaking. For a lot of filmmakers, myself included, this effect was used not just as a tool, but as a crutch to achieve that cinematic look. These days, super shallow focus is everywhere. It's a fashion more than a technique. So it's really, really cool to see an episodic show like The Handmaid's Tale incorporate the effect in a systematic way as a motif of its visual language. The director of the first three episodes of this show, the director who set the tone is Reed Morano, a former cinematographer. She and her own DP for this project, Colin Watkinson, created an extremely concentrated aesthetic, one that is beautiful and terrifying at the same time. To capture the dystopian world of Gilead meant choosing the right camera and the right lenses. Murano shot on the Ari Alexa minis in 4K and used lenses that open all the way up to apertures of 1.3 and 1.4, which means your depth of field is going to be razor thin and everything outside of that field is going to be blown out in a pretty uniform blur. Now this shallow focus serves the story in three ways. First, to capture the main character's point of view. Offred, played by Elizabeth Moss, is a handmaid in the Republic of Gilead, a theocratic and totalitarian state that has overtaken America in which women no longer have any rights. Handmaids are the last women who can still have children, the rest of society being largely sterile, and they're forced to bear children for leaders of the regime. But it wasn't always like this. Before the revolution, Offred lived in the America of our time. And the story of The Handmaid's Tale is really the story of the transition between America and Gilead told through the experience of Offred. To dial us into that horror, Reed and Watkinson focus on the face. It's hard to remember a show that relied so much on one extreme close-up, but Elizabeth Moss is definitely up to the task. With a camera mere inches from her nose, the filmmakers combined a wide 28mm Zeiss lens used only for these shots with a shallow depth of field to create intense intimacy. With her bonnet on, it's almost as if we're under a blanket with a character. The shallow depth of field extreme close-ups are an effective way to get the audience to identify with Offred, but they also point to an important theme that as a slave in an authoritarian state where your physical being is effectively controlled by someone else, your only agency is mental. The mind is where you have to retreat, to escape, to plan, and to remember. It's only a thin plane of focus, but it's still yours. Second, shallow focus is used to help create the world of Gilead. Unlike many dystopias you see in film and TV, Gilead is not a post-apocalyptic world of rubble and ruin. It's actually the opposite, a meticulously manicured New England full of sunlight and green foliage. Reed and Watkinson cite Kubrick as an inspiration, and they echo a lot of his one-point perspective framings and definitely capture the creepiness of that. But for the women of Gilead, what's notable about this world is how little they know about it. Think of all the knowledge that's accessible to you through the internet. In Gilead, women are not only prohibited from going online, they're prohibited from reading anything. The result is a perspective that's extraordinarily narrow. And Shallow Depth of Field captures this perfectly because it literally narrows the visual information in focus. The Handmaid's Tale is constructed in fragments. You have America and you have Gilead, and the show gives you pieces in between the two, but never the full timeline. This is in part because the show's primary characters don't have the full timeline themselves. This brutal new world, or at least the conditions that made it possible, snuck up on them. I have to let you go. But that doesn't mean it came out of nowhere, that they aren't somehow connected. For example, even though Reed and Watkinson adopt a more handheld verite style for the flashbacks, the shallow focus remains. And they do this, I think, to suggest that both worlds suffer from problems of limited perspective. In Gilead, perspective is limited by force. But in our world, perspective is limited by choice. We keep our heads down, eyes glued to our screens, stuck in our echo chambers while the blurry world around us changes. It brings home a vital message that our rights are not guaranteed by the world. We fight for them and have to protect them every day because they can be taken away from us if we don't pay attention to the world beyond our focus. Everyone likes shallow depth of field. It's beautiful, and because it's beautiful, everyone uses it to make their work look better, more professional, more cinematic, and as a result, we get used to seeing it. When I watched The Handmaid's Tale, I was amazed at how much the depth of field 
influence my feelings about the characters and the world and the story. It's just rare that you see this device used with such purpose, so methodically and so effectively. And it really is effective. If you don't believe me, binge watch a few episodes of The Handmaid's Tale, then go outside. I guarantee you'll have a newfound respect for how much there is to see. One of the questions I get asked the most is what software I use to make these videos. To edit, I use Final Cut Pro 10, and since 10 is so different from the version of the program that came before it, I depended a lot on online videos to teach me the new features. Now, these days, you can pretty much teach yourself anything this way, and Skillshare is the perfect way to do it. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators, with more than 16,000 classes in editing, and graphic design, animation, web development, and more. All the classes are professional and understandable and follow a clear learning curve. A premium membership begins around $10 a month for unlimited access to all the courses, but the first 500 people to sign up using the first link in the description will get a two-month free trial. In those two months, you could easily learn the skills you need to start a new hobby or business. You could learn editing or even something more specialized like After Effects, which I always say will be in demand forever. You'll always have a job. And Skillshare has dozens of classes in After Effects that can help you master that program. What's the skill that you've been putting off learning? Why not sign up to Skillshare using the link below and start right now. Thanks guys, I'll see you all next time.